In this lesson, we're going to talk about the risk factors for getting colon cancer. So we're going to talk about some risk factors that you can't change, like your family history, but we're also going to talk about some of the risk factors that you can change, like your dietary choices. So we're going to get into the more specific details as to those risk factors in this lesson. Before we get into the risk factors, let's talk about what colon cancer is. Colon cancer is also known as colorectal carcinoma or colorectal cancer or CRC for short. Colorectal cancer or CRC is a cancer that involves the large intestine and or rectum. So it involves the large intestine or the colon and can also involve the rectum as well. Now colon cancer is so important to talk about because it is a very common type of cancer. It is estimated to be the third or fourth most common type of cancer. And the mean age of onset of colon cancer is 70 years of age, so it's oftentimes going to be a cancer that affects older individuals, but new evidence shows us that colon cancer is affecting younger and younger patient populations. Now, the topic of this lesson is the risk factors for getting colon cancer. Although there are cases of a family history and certain genetic conditions that increase the risk of colon cancer, which we're going to talk about in the next upcoming slides, most cases are going to be sporadic, meaning that most cases are not going to be solely due to a hereditary predisposition, but they're going to be due to several known factors that increase the risk of colon cancer. We're going to talk about those in the next upcoming slides. Now let's talk about the risk factors in colon cancer. The information that's going to be presented in this lesson on risk factors is mostly going to come from this meta-analysis entitled Meta-Analyses of Colorectal Cancer Risk Factors. We're going to first talk about the non modifiable risk factors for getting colorectal cancer. And by far, the most important is going to be increasing age. Increasing age is a risk factor for getting colorectal cancer, as well as many other types of cancers as well. So it's a risk factor for many different types of cancer. And the reason that this is the case is that the longer an individual lives, the more their cells have divided, meaning that mutations from each cell division accumulate over time. So more and more mutations accumulate as a patient gets older. So with colorectal cancer, traditionally it's believed that this risk factor is going to be more likely in those who are 50 years and older. But again, younger and younger patients are getting colorectal cancer as well. And a lot of them are probably going to be due to some of the modifiable risk factors we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. Another important risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is a family history. So a family history of colorectal cancer indicates a genetic predisposition, meaning that there may be certain genes that you have that are problematic and they are going to predispose you to getting colorectal cancer. So there may be some genetic condition that runs through your family or there are other predisposing mutations. So you may have mutation in one gene that increases the risk for getting cancer in general or getting colorectal cancer more specifically. The significance of a family history is going to be more important when you have relatives that have had colorectal cancer when they are younger. More specifically, younger than the age of 60 for first degree relatives who are going to be your parents or siblings. So if, for instance, you have a parent or sibling that has had colorectal cancer when they are very old, for instance, when they're in their 80s, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a genetic predisposition. But if they're going to be younger, if they are less than 60 years of age, this may indicate a genetic predisposition for getting colorectal cancer. Or if you have other family members who are less than 40 to 50 years of age, especially less than 50 years of age as over 50 years of age is when we start to think about increasing age as a potential risk factor for getting colorectal cancer. So again, if you see a first degree relative less than 60 years of age or other family members like second degree relatives who have had colorectal cancer less than 40 or 50 years of age, that may indicate a family history and that may indicate one of the following genetic conditions. Now, along with the family history, there are two important genetic conditions that increase your risk for colorectal cancer as well. We're going to briefly talk about those here. One of them is known as Lynch syndrome. This is a familial cancer syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant condition, meaning that you only need one affected allele of a gene to have this condition. So it's going to be something you're going to see in your first degree relatives. It's due to a defect in the DNA mismatch repair proteins, and it increases the risk of not only colorectal cancer, but also endometrial and ovarian cancers and some other cancers as well. And with regards to colorectal cancer age of onset with Lynch syndrome, the age of onset is estimated to be 44 to 61. So again, that comes 
comes back down to our family history as a potential risk factor, especially less than 60 or less than 50. And the other important genetic condition that increases your risk for colorectal cancer, essentially increasing it to a 100% chance of getting colorectal cancer is familial adenomatous polyposis. This too is also an autosomal dominant condition, meaning that you would have had to have at least one parent that has this condition. And it is due to a mutation in the APC gene, and it involves hundreds to thousands of adenomatous polyps, oftentimes by the age of 20. So this has an earlier age of onset of colorectal cancer, oftentimes at the age of 39. So these two conditions are estimated to affect or account for 5% of all colorectal cancer cases. Some other conditions that increase the risk for colorectal cancer includes putz jagers syndrome, Gardner syndrome, and Turcotte syndrome as well. Now some other risk factors for getting colorectal cancer include a history of inflammatory bowel disease. And this is due to a chronic inflammatory process in the large intestine. So the two conditions that are going to be important are ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis is going to be the more important one here. Patients with ulcerative colitis are going to have an inflammation of their large intestine that causes bloody diarrhea. And those patients are at a very high risk for getting colorectal cancer, oftentimes within five to 10 years of diagnosis of ulcerative colitis due to that severe chronic inflammation of the large intestine. And then Crohn's disease has an increased risk as well, but not as high or not as significant as in ulcerative colitis. Now let's talk about some of the modifiable risk factors for getting colorectal cancer. One of them is going to be smoking. Now smoking exposes the patient to many carcinogens and this increases the number and frequency of mutations leading to subsequent increases in colorectal cancer, especially rectal cancer. And this also increases the risk of many different types of cancers as well. So it's important to reduce or stop smoking for patients to reduce the risk for not only colorectal cancer, but also many other types of cancers as well. Another modifiable risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is alcohol use. So alcohol use, even mild or moderate use of alcohol, increases the risk of a variety of cancers, including colorectal cancer. So again, it's important to reduce or stop drinking alcohol. So again, those are two very important and so those are two very important modifiable risk factors for getting colorectal cancer. Now let's talk about dietary factors that have been shown to be associated with onset or risk of getting colorectal cancer. The first one is going to be a chronic low fiber diet. More information can be found in this article entitled Dietary Fiber Intake and Risk of Colorectal Cancer in Incident and Recurrence Adenoma in the Prostate, Lung, Colorectal and Ovarian Cancer Screening Trial. So a chronic low fiber diet may lead to risk of colorectal cancer due to abnormal changes in bowel lining and changes to colonic microbiota or colonic bacteria. So it's important to increase fiber consumption. Having higher fiber consumption has been shown to reduce the risk of colorectal cancer or has been associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. So you can find increased fiber in many different types of grains and vegetables as well. Another important risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is high processed meat intake. This comes from this meta-analysis entitled Red and Processed Meat and Colorectal Cancer Incidents, Meta-Analysis of Prospective Studies. So the exact etiology or the exact reason as to why high processed meat intake increases the risk of colorectal cancer is not entirely known, but it may be due to the presence of what are known as N-nitroso compounds or NOCs, which are themselves known to be carcinogenic. So because of this, because of this associated risk with regards to high processed meat intake and the association with increased risk of colorectal cancer, it's important to try to reduce consumption of processed meats. This can include pepperoni, salami, hot dogs, and other processed meats as well. Some other dietary factors that have been shown to be associated with an increased risk of colorectal cancer include high red meat intake. This comes from the meta-analysis entitled Consumption of Red Meat in Processed Meat and Cancer Incidents, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Prospective Studies. So again, the exact reason as to why a high red meat diet may increase the risk of colorectal cancer is not entirely known, but it may be due to heme, which would be from the blood itself or from myoglobin in the meat itself. So the reason why heme might 
lead to or increase the risk of colorectal cancer is because he may lead to the generation of reactive oxygen species. So reactive oxygen species can cause cell damage. So this may be one reason as to why high red meat intake is associated with colorectal cancer risk. So it's important to reduce red meat consumption. So that is also another modifiable risk factor that we may be able to work on or act on to reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. And another possible risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is low vitamin D levels. This comes from the observational study entitled Vitamin D Levels in Patients with Colorectal Cancer Before and After Treatment Initiation. So from that study, it was shown that patients who have been newly diagnosed with colorectal cancer are significantly more likely to suffer from vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency compared to the general population. So this begs the question as to does vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency increase the risk of colorectal cancer? At this point, we're not entirely sure, but it doesn't hurt to increase your vitamin D levels. So either from sun exposure or getting it from a supplement or getting it from your diet in something like mushrooms. So again, this is another possible modifiable risk factor for reducing your risk of colorectal cancer. Some other possible risk factors for getting colorectal cancer include long-standing or chronic low fruit intake. So some studies have shown that a low fruit intake is associated with increased risk of colorectal cancer. So it may not be a bad idea to actually increase your fruit consumption. And then likewise, a low vegetable diet or low vegetable intake for long periods of time has also been associated with an increased risk of colorectal cancer. And because of this, it may be important to increase your vegetable consumption to reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. So like other risk factors we talked about before, these are going to be associations. So we don't know if this is actually causation. So we don't know if low fruit intake and low vegetable intake actually increases the risk of colorectal cancer, but we know that it is associated at least in some studies and some studies don't show this finding. So there is some point of contention here with regards to does low fruit and low vegetable intake for long periods of time, does that increase the risk of colorectal cancer? If it does, it may be due to the fact that a patient may not be getting enough fiber in their diet. So that may be one reason, but we're not entirely sure as for instance, one study does find this, and that study is entitled Fruit, Vegetables, and Colorectal Cancer Risk, the European Perspective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition. But another study doesn't find a significant association between low fruit and low vegetable intake and increased risk of colorectal cancer. And this article is entitled Low Intake of Vegetables and Fruits and Risk of Colorectal Cancer, the Japan Collaborative Cohort Study. So again, there is some question as to does low fruit and low vegetable intake increase the risk of colorectal cancer. It may, but there is some mixed evidence here. So those are some of the important factors that are associated with increased risk of colorectal cancer. But there's one other dietary factor I want to mention here that may actually reduce the risk of colorectal cancer, and that is yogurt consumption. Now, this study came out in 2020. It's entitled Yogurt Consumption in Colorectal Cancer Incidence and Mortality in the Nurses Health Study and the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. So that study, along with a couple of other studies, have indeed shown that yogurt consumption is associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. So I do want to mention that this is another possible dietary factor that may reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. Now let's talk about a couple of other important risk factors. One is lack of exercise. Lack of exercise, especially vigorous exercise, so a sedentary lifestyle with no regular physical activity does seem to increase the risk of colorectal cancer. So it is important to exercise regularly, especially vigorous exercise, to help reduce the risk of colorectal cancer in the future. And then another risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is a high body mass index. So being overweight or obese, especially central obesity, so having a large abdomen, this is going to be a risk factor for getting colorectal cancer as well. So the reason that a high body mass index could be a risk factor for getting colorectal cancer is because there is increased systemic inflammation and increased cellular proliferation. So due to the anabolic environment, cells can divide more frequently. 
So having a high body mass index, so being overweight or obese, not only increases your risk for colorectal cancer, but it can increase your risk for other types of cancers as well. And this is going to be associated with diabetes. So patients with diabetes are also at an increased risk for getting colorectal cancer as well. So because of this, it's important to attempt to lose some weight as this will help reduce the risk of not only colorectal cancer, but other cancers and diabetes as well. If you want to learn more about colorectal cancer, including the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.